Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to focus on arpeggio piano accompaniment, but figure out a way to customize it to suit the requirements of the song, to suit our composition, to suit the musicians we are jamming with, and to also blend well with an ensemble. Assuming that a bunch of people together are playing the same chords, but with a lot of patterns. So the guitar player might be playing a block chord pattern, or some kind of, uh, the drummer might be playing, you know, a usual drum groove. A bass guitar player might be playing something like a walking bass line. But each of these individuals would be playing notes or chords or notes of the chord, which will align or will or which will hit at certain points of the beat. Now, while the bass player, the drummer, the guitar player and everyone else in the rhythm section are playing a specific pattern, you have the option of either copying them, playing on pretty much the same hit points, depending on the beat division system. If it's dividing by two, then you have eight potential hit points in a bar of four, four. One and two and three and four and so they may hit at the one, the end of the two, in the end on of the four. So whether you want to follow a musician of the band or whether you want to develop something on your own or maybe there is no band and you just want to figure out a way to customize arpeggio patterns, just make them a bit interesting and serve your composition the best. This lesson should be for you. So stay tuned till the very end. We are going to take a simple chord progression which we'll use pretty much for the entire of the tutorial. So let's get started with the G minor scale. It has two flats, namely B flat and E flat, derived from the B flat major scale. So to form a relative minor, you go up six or you build the major scale from the sixth degree. So let's give G minor a go, ascending and descending. So we'll pick up some chords from here. Let's do G minor, B flat major. F major and C minor. What I like about this progression is you can, this sounds a bit more uh, sadder because it's on the natural minor, but you can also make it a bit more braver and uplifting by making that last chord major. So you can do G minor, B flat major, F major, C minor, or else G minor, B flat major, F major, C major. So that'll end up being the G Dorian scale. So you could kind of toggle between these two scales. The natural minor, which has the six flat, along with the three flat and the Dorian, which has the three flat, the seven flat, just like the natural minor, but the six is not flat. The six is left alone, or you can consider it to be raised with respect to the natural minor. So the ingredients for this lesson would be four chords of the G minor scale. That's G minor, B flat, F and C minor. And that last chord, if you want to bring in the Dorian element, you can do G minor, B flat, F, and C major, both of which can work very well together. So now let's work on arpeggiating this chord progression and then figuring out a way to customize the arpeggio. So th th these are our ingredients, the four chords. And before we get started, it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Also, my handwritten notes will be available for you on Patreon. It'll show you how to form the chords, how to blend the inversions, and also the patterns which are going to be used in this tutorial. Okay, so let's get cracking. So you take G minor. First of all, let's build the correct inversions for all these four chords. So if you start with the root position of G minor, G, B flat, D, then you go F, B flat, D, F, A, C, E flat, G, C, so you're trying to find the most efficient chord, the, the efficient next chord shape. So G minor, B flat major, you just drift your thumb down. And then F major, you just drop these two fingers down because they have the uh, F in common. And then for the C minor, you drift these two fingers down. And then you get a nice C minor again. Now, you could also consider playing it without inversions just to kind of explore the upper register or the upper voice. Maybe that sounds melodic for you. Like, 
that's the top register so you could kind of bypass the inversions or use the inversions in a very melodic way but for now let's do it in the textbook way to play with the inversions in such a way that they are efficient so g minor b flat major f major c minor now let's do g minor in the first inversion just to try and get through all the possibilities so g minor b flat f major c ma c minor or else c major if you want to go into into the dorian world so g minor b flat major f major c major or c minor there we go and then second inversion of g minor perhaps that's d g b so second inversion a quick trick would be the root is in the middle first inversion a quick trick would be the root is on the top and the root position is the root is on in the left side of the chord so if i do second inversion g minor b flat major f major c minor and then maybe dorian with the c major at the end so let's now bring in an arpeggio pattern starting from the top note which is very traditional so starting with the b flat i'm going to choose the second inversion for now for our study so instead of whacking it together you're arpeggiating it by doing it note by note so start with the top and just flow down and up down and up so high the middle low middle high middle low middle high middle change your chord f major c minor g minor b flat major f major c minor perhaps use your ring finger for the for the b flat up there now this is one pattern which starts on the top note you can also do high low middle low which i like a lot another arpeggio you can try and what is the left hand doing left hand is just playing the chord roots as you would normally do when you are accompanying okay get used to these arpeggios and also shifting the chord with the correct inversions okay and also bringing in some dynamics along the way so dynamics basically means some volume build up dropping and raising it can always be gradual people will appreciate it more if your volume changes gradually rather than be sudden see that's too sudden you know it should be more gradual anyway so that's the arpeggio base pattern or uh, that that's the starting pattern we can use now to take this forward to customize this arpeggio the best way to look at it would be in terms of groupings of beats within a bar we call these as accents so in a bar with eight eighth notes so you will be dividing the beat into two units it could be two equal units or straight you can also divide into two unequal units called swing so in this particular bar if you have eight eighth notes you can play them as 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 but what happens here is the 1 and 2 and 3 is the same note so b flat landing at the 1 and 3 makes the pattern in my opinion very predictable and if your bandmates are doing specific patterns if they are latching on to the off beats like the ands of the 2 ands of the 1 and of the 3 or and of the 4 any of the ands and in combination with the down beats so the off beats or the uh, the ands in combination with the down beats which is 1 2 3 4 if there's a pattern like that going on this pattern is going to slow down the entire song it's going to end up being boring and counterproductive so you don't want to do this all the time you want to customize this to suit your song so what's happening here it's it's eight eighth notes but the way we are playing it is 
this stop note is repeating and the cycle is repeating it's becoming a carbon copy of each other after just two beats one and two and three and four and see it's repeating one and two and three and if these were 16th notes it would repeat every beat you know one e and two e so it's starting it'll feel pretty monotonous even without other instruments on its own you know it sounds okay but it can get a bit monotonous and you will need to change this a bit so two ways to change this would be to use two numbers which are uh, odd and which add up to an even number so that would be 3 plus 5 so 3 plus 5 equals 8 also 5 plus 3 you can jumble that round so how do you generate an arpeggio pattern which is 3 plus 5 as well as 5 plus 3 you can't possibly play the same order of notes you can't do 1 2 3 1 2. in your head you may be thinking 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 but the listener still feeling 1 2 3 4 1 yes you could adjust volume but it'll start getting a bit confusing because volume can shock people at times so i would want to reorder the note so if this is my point of focus if this is my note if this is my main accent note what i can then do is play the 3 that's three notes 1 2 3 but then repeat this at the 1 2 3 4 5 so it will be 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 i'm i'm trying to not repeat this and a good way to prevent yourself from repeating it which will also sound good is to hold that note down with that respective finger in this case the ring finger 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 okay so this feels a lot different than 1 2 3 4 1 2 3. 1 this is the traditional predictable arpeggio pattern but now i want to change it to 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 and we can flip this around it can now be 5 plus 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 
chord progression which I gave you G minor, B flat major, F major and C minor or C major. So the next level of playing this exercise would be usage of sixth intervals or combo notes or dyads sometimes we call them. So if you take a G minor in its second inversion, let's start with the second inversion and keep it there for now. Instead of doing one, two, three, or let's just go back to our original one, one, two, three, four, four. To make the accent more obvious, right now the pitch of the note is making it obvious. B flat is always the higher pitch, so that is becoming the impact. But to make that even more impactful, as we mess with the uh, groupings, you go one, two, three, four, one, two. So what did I do there? I'm hitting the outer two notes together to get more impact and that's not going to change the uh, the vibe of the chord it's still G minor but instead of playing it one by one all the time I'm hitting it two notes at a time and then the inside one and then continuing my pattern so one two three four one two three four one two three four with all the chords I like this hybrid pattern it feels like I'm also playing chords you know chords and arpeggios together could also feel like two people are playing one guy is holding the chords and if you hold your pedal all of the notes will resonate with each other and you'll get all those overtones and those extra sounds F C minor now how do we apply this concept to the 3 meets 5 grouping or even the 5 meets 3 grouping so that it's, it's the same concept. So whatever is the impact note or the accent hit point could be played with the outer two notes together. So for this inversion it would be a 6th, for this inversion or the root position it would be a 5th and again a 6th if you're doing the first inversion. So I'm going to stick with the second inversion for now. So you go one two three four one now i want to change this to three meets five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three. so earlier i just did my realigning of notes in the arpeggio i did one two three four five one two three but to give more impact one two, i'm i'm whacking the two notes together one two three one two three four five one it almost feels like I'm playing on a different time signature, but actually it's still 4-4. 4, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. See, if I'm moving to the 4-4. Four, 1, four. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's the same pattern, isn't it? It's high, middle, low, high, middle, low, middle, low. Now with that extra note added, to make the accent very obvious, and to also give people the sense that you're also hitting notes as chords together, as blocks. So, F, C, bang, bang, hit, hit, F, F, C, minor. And if I do 5 meets 3, same story. I just have to jumble the, the, the pattern. the numbers 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2. or you can even if you're having it uh, if you're finding it a challenge saying the numbers you can use Indian conical which could be or We leave some of the syllables in my handwritten notes. You can check that out. You have ta for one, taka for two, takita for three, taka dimi for four, and taka ginato or takita taka or taka takita for five groupings. Now we are definitely feeling the accent alongside this arpeggio. So it's like an arpeggio and a chord pattern hybrid played together. So the music is a lot more fuller already. But to make the melodic movement of the arpeggio a lot, a lot more interesting, you can make use of an extra note of the same triad, of the same chord. So if you take G minor, 
where can I or how can I play the extra note? See, if I look at it as D, G, B flat, the extra note right now is begging to be played here with the pinky finger. So that's just a carbon copy of this finger played there. So I can make use of that extra note and that could even be an accent. Or if I'm playing G minor like this, then the extra note could be played here. You know, I tend to generally like to add on from the top to get that extra note there. So G minor, let, let's walk us through all of the extra notes of each chord. G minor, extra note, D. B flat major, extra note, still D. Then F major, extra note, look at the bottom and just copy it on the top, that's C. C major or else C minor's extra note would be C on the top. So, so let's now do the 4-4, four, four, the normal arpeggio. What did we do to strengthen it? We did... We added the note at the impact point. So to add variety, you can toggle between both of the accent notes. See, B flat, D. D flat, D. B flat, D. B flat, D. B flat, and this will sound really awesome with the 3-5 and the 5-3 grouping. So. Or you can do the five meets three. One, let's do it with all the chords. Extra. the pattern you can kind of repeat the old note which was an accent but now it is not an accent because you changed it to the other note so we've made the arpeggio pattern interesting by changing the accents or the groupings of the notes we've then made it a lot more impactful by stressing on the accent hit points by usage of the sixth intervals and the outer notes played together. We've also now focused on the usage of the extra note. Okay, another thing you can do to make this even more unique and even more like a stamp you're putting on the song would be fillers. So if I just show you and then teach... something I'm doing pretty much at the end of the bar, correct? One and two. So what's happening here? So I'm drifting to my B flat. flat G A B flat takes me there smoothly but where am I doing one and two and three and four and just at the last two beats of the bar four and one just at the last two beats of the bar four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one why did I do because I wanted to end C minor or C major like this. So, so depending. So, depending on the inversion of the chord. So, let's figure that out together now. I did da 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 
remember because I'm coming back to G minor. So. brings out the flavor of the accents it not only makes it more interesting of an arpeggio it also makes it very melodic it's almost like an intro you can use this as part of a song just as you on the playing on the piano so the arpeggios are getting a lot more customized i hope because you can decide what your accent groupings could be which notes do you want to stress on adding of the extra note and now the fillers okay and last but not least let's focus on the left hand so before we focus on the left hand, we can look at this not as 3 plus 5 or as 5 plus 3. You can also look at it as specific hit points by just saying, I want to focus on the 1 and the 3 of the bar and I can play. 3, 1 and 3 or I can focus on the 1 and the end of the 2. There we go. So it's another perspective. If I focus on the one and the end of the two, it's pretty much like three meets five, you know. One and two and two. One and two and three and four and one and two and or I can focus on the end of the three. One and two and three. So that's another way of thinking. If you're having a problem going three meets five or five meets three, you can just count it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So your top note in this case has to be highlighted at the accent hit point or at the impact point. One and two and three and four. And so it could now be any impact point. It could even be a beat four of the bar. One and two and three and four and one. Four, one. Four, one. Four, one. Four, one. Of course, one and three we've already done. It could now be one, two. One two. I'm not I've actually not used one two before. So this is my first time. Nice, good stuff. Right. So moving forward, let's get even more impact with the left hand, and not just impact, also contrast, because the left hand can do one of two things. It can follow the accents. It can just go. Let's say I'm coming back to three meets five grouping. So it can do. You know, it can do one two three one two three four five one two three. That's a nice way to further uh, impact the, uh, uh, the accent. And the other thing the left hand can do is go contrasting to what's going on in the right hand and just play the good old pulse. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and then the right. pulse you can do a slow pulse one two three just at the one and three and keep the accents going in the right hand just for a practice you can do semi briefs just long notes just to get a feel of the bar and the beats and the sub beats now one and three minims. But, but look at my right hand. It's still doing three meets five by the left hand's doing minims, half notes. Three. One. And I can come back to follow it. Sometimes be by mistake. But now the accents are in the right. Minims in the left let's do back to our pulse and I like
like to always play my left hand chords my roots with root and octave for two reasons one is it sounds a lot more thicker you get a much more richer deeper sound but the other thing is because it's being played root and octave you can toggle that and the pattern becomes a lot more interesting pitch wise like a kick and a snare drum all of the things in the right hand continue to exist you know i am reordering the notes of the arpeggio adding that extra note i'm also using the sixth interval to make it a bit more stronger adding the filler at the end there we go and the left hand augments it and the left hand makes it a lot more contrasting as well by not making it confusing by making it normal by bringing the pulse with respect to the accented movement in the right hand and one final thing to leave you with in this lesson would be why have just two hit points why just have two accent hit points why should it just be 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 why can't we do something like 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 we call that the thresio Very pop sounding. Or you can make it a two-bar phrase. One two three. One two three. One two. Wait two three. One two three. One two three. One two one. Two. Mm. Uh, one and two and three and four and wait two three. That's called the song clave. So that's G minor, going to the next bar and playing B flat in the two three accented mode. And the left hand contrasts the whole thing with a nice pulse. doesn't have to be a one bar phrase it uh, so the things i'd like to leave you with for further practice and if you're interested we can do another lesson focusing on bigger sets of accent groupings we can go into 16th notes instead of eighth notes we can do more hit points in a bar uh, like the thresio i showed you we can even do two bar groupings you know uh, that will be a lot of fun so let me know in the comments what you thought about the lesson and also whether you know you you'd be interested in something like this moving forward more on arpeggios basically our channel does a lot of arpeggios we leave you a playlist so you can check it out if you found this lesson a bit more advanced so you can see some of the very beginner lessons we've not left any stone unturned i think when it comes to arpeggios right guys thanks a ton for watching the lesson do consider getting the notes on patreon and don't forget to subscribe and like the video and share the video and do something to help the video grow if possible cheers thanks and catch you in the next one